Hey Jude, how you doing? Um, I'm coming out to ride mountain bike today and I thought about you. So I thought, you know what? If you ever make it down here to where the weather's nice, which it always is, and you could go mountain biking with me, that this would be the trail that I would probably bring you to. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I don't have my chest mount on, so I'm gonna stop and probably take some pictures, show you what the trail's kind of like. Um, but uh, here's where I'm at. I'm at Chuck Lennon, this is my home trail. We got 11 miles of trail, everywhere from really, really um, interesting and challenging, which is what this trail is, to really gnarly and almost insane. And maybe I'll take a few pictures uh, of the insane stuff too. I'm not gonna ride it today, but at least I'll show you what it is. So anyway, come on, take a ride with me. What's really cool about the trails here you can see on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they go counterclockwise. And on Saturday, Tuesday, and Thursday, they go clockwise. So what that means is we would head out that way on those three days, or on the other days, we would head that way. So we have basically one trail that gives us two. I decided to uh, bring my hardtail today. Didn't want to use the full suspension bike. I like hardtails, and uh, every once in a while I like to get back on it. It's like my trusty steed. This is an example of some of the trees that fall over the trail because of hurricanes. And what we do, instead of taking the whole tree out, we'll put a sign up on the tree. You think you can guess what that sign means? I'm sure you did. A lot of this trail has sections like this, and you can see that you got to thread the needle between the trees. That's not so bad because you have, well, a lot of room. The problem is, if you drag your pedal, you can see how much room you don't have. So you've got to really be careful. And if you look real close, you can see where a lot of people have cracked this tree with their pedals. This is pretty cool because when you come to this part of the trail, you can go that way, which is the longer way to go, or you can take this little shortcut here and go to the left, and uh, that's a bail lot to go back to the parking lot. It cuts about a mile and a half off of the full trail. I really like this uh, part of the trail. You probably can't tell, but this is about an eight foot drop right here. And then the trail continues, but it gets really squirrely. Because as you continue, I want you to look at all the root tangles we have here. It's really janky. And you got to go over all these roots. And then the trail continues up here. But then whatever goes down goes up. So you got about a 10 foot climb. But look what you're climbing over. So you have to really pick your line well. And if you miss the line, you drop down to about a 12 foot sinkhole. I don't know if you can tell just how steep that is. The camera never tells the true story. But that's about a 12 foot drop. Here's the trail. <laughs> and there's the drop. Here's another section of the trail, it's actually one of my favorite, but I came from that way and I'm heading that way. But you have a decision to make here. You can go to the right and you can follow a trail that's a little bit easier or you can go straight ahead and uh, look what we see again. And you go under the tree and you go over these roots Almost a five foot sheer drop here, but I'm gonna walk down here. We call this brick down. And then you go over this way and look what you're greeted by again. But here's where you came down. You can see my bike up there. And this is the drop. You see why we call it brick down? Because of all the brick that's stuck in the mud. And right over there, another part of the trail, is brick up. 
Okay, let's continue. This is a real interesting part of the trail because we're coming to a place we call the Hub. I'll tell you why in a minute. This is another tree that came down during one of our hurricanes. So obviously we have the duck sign, but the bell's there that whenever you ride by here and you had a good time, you reach out and you ring the bell. And here's the hub. Well, a hub on a bike means what? It's the center of a wheel. And then spokes go out from the center. Well, that's what this is. We have another trail that comes in here. We have another trail that goes out there. Another trail that goes out there. And another trail that we're gonna take goes out there. So this is called the hub. And here's a picture of the whole thing. You can see I have my bike resting against the bench over there. But this is where some riders will stop, they'll get some water, they'll rest a little bit before they continue on. But we're riding Screaming Hawk today and we're going down that trail. And since today is Wednesday, we're gonna go counterclockwise. I think this is a really cool feature and I'll show you why in a minute. This feature is named the Toilet Bowl for one simple reason. Riders slowly drop down the hill. I've got to walk over here to get you a better view of it. And they come down the path here. They have to thread the needle between those two trees. You see them right there. Then they have a real long climb. And this is what they have to climb over just before they get to the top and continue the trail. Well, why do you think they call it the toilet bowl? Well, one, it's kind of a round trail. I'm gonna walk down a little bit here. It's sort of a round trail because it starts up there and it drops down here and then comes around before you climb again. But if you miss the trail, this is what you fall in. If you were sitting on a toilet and you fell in, what would you fall into? I'll let your parents answer that question because that's why they call this the toilet bowl. You don't want to leave the trail and fall in. And there's some of those roots coming out. If you come and ride with me, we'll look at this but we're gonna come this way. That's the bypass. Here's something else I wanna show you. I think it's cool. Most riders come through here, but some riders go through here. You can see how much room there is not between the trees. Well, you can see the height of the handlebar. Look how many riders they've come by and hit the tree with the handlebar. I really like this section too. You can see the very, very large oak tree over here. But as you come up the trail, you've got to watch out there. And you have to pick your line very carefully because you can see how high those roots are. Of course, I go over here. A friend of mine goes up here. And you come over all these roots. And then you have to make a left. But watch your momentum because you have a tree right here and you want to stay on the trail and go over that bridge. Because if you miss the trail, you're over about a two foot drop right there. Usually it's wet, usually it's mucky. You don't want to be there. And here's just another look at the bridge, which is easy to cross, but it's fun. And here's looking backward on the same trail. There's that oak tree, there's all the root cluster. And there's the steed. So here's another fun part of the trail I like. Seems like I'm repeating myself all the time, but it really is a good time. We're coming down this way and we're gonna follow the trail and it's gonna go to the right. But here's what we find. You don't have much time to climb that root cluster.
and then you drop a little bit and then you have to climb again but you have to pick the right line or else you're gonna hit these roots here go between these trees I accidentally hit the telephoto and then you continue your ride which we're gonna do and just for nostalgia that's another tree that came down for the hurricane luckily for us the big oak tree caught it because the trunk goes all the way down to there so this is another feature I think you'd enjoy might be a challenge but we'll have a good time I guess one important thing to point out is that all these features I'm showing you you can choose them if you want to but there's a bypass to go around them and I'll show you the bypass in a second so that's what's cool about this trail you can either choose to go on the feature or not so relax mom relax dad I'll take care of them this is the perfect example of what I was talking about we just left that area with the bypass well here's another one you can see that there's a split they all lead to the same trail up here but if you take this trail down here it's a nice easy uh, descent with a nice incline if you decide to take this one remember we talked about brick down well this is brick up and that's about a nice four to five foot almost sheer climb to get to the top of it's fun but some people may not want it I'll give you a closer look in a second okay I'm on the trail trying to give you perspective with my uh, with my bike up there but you can see the incline some riders like to take this line here which is brand new and it's really steep this one is worn in a little bit that one is worn in the most so you actually have three different ways to climb this however you choose but this one is called brick up for that reason Just had a rider go by probably wondering who the heck I'm talking to <laughs> here's another section of the trail that we call the whirlpool and just by the design it should make sense to you because what some riders will do is come up go around and then continue or you can just continue whatever you want to do but here's what the whirlpool looks like and again I'm not sure that I'd want to drop in there because when the water is not too high this is where the riders go and they're able to ride the rim of this whole thing and then continue on the trail now what you can't see is that bike right there there's a bicycle that's sunk in there it's more of a joke than anything but when the water level goes down it looks like somebody left the trail and actually did a header inside the mud it's pretty funny this green stuff don't know what it is but uh, let me show you hold on okay it kind of floats on the top and the water separates see but I don't think it's something that I would want to go under if I was in that water you well when I show you something like this you can probably guess what this means already yep another tree that came down because of the hurricane so you're right under that tree and we head down the trail this way and what's cool here is the trail gives a rider their first up and over what that means is they can go around this feature if they want to or they can go right over it and that's how it's built and if you have the right technique there's nothing to it this is how you know a rider doesn't know exactly what to do somebody's coming straight ahead they're gonna go over the the up and over and then you look at the big skid mark ah maybe I better rethink this <laughs> they probably backed up and went around or they walked over okay let's go and here's another part of the trail that doesn't leave you much room when you come between these trees and you can see all the marks there at handlebars that are being made 
here and here, you only have that much room between the trees to clear it. Wonderful. And here's one of those decision points again. You can go that way, which is pretty smooth, or you can go this way and climb the treehouse. You can see that the boardwalk goes up between those trees. Let me come around here and give you a different perspective. <laughs> so, you climb over here, climb and drop. Real quick funny story, first time I rode this I was scared to death, but I got up there, I got right there. I was so happy that I was going to lean against that tree. I didn't realize that I put my hand right there and I fell right between the trees and the bike got all tangled up. Funny as heck. And I was wearing my camera, so it's on video. Here's the downside of coming this way. Once you come off the treehouse, you come down here and you see you bank to the left. But if you miss the trail, there's the trail. Look at that little bit of space there. You have another sinkhole. And you're going to end up down there. About six to seven feet deep. So, it's funny when people ride the trail, they don't really pay attention to their surroundings. They go right by here and never realize if they were just another foot to the left, they could end up dumping right inside that hole. Always pay attention. <laughs> I know, you guessed it already. I'm going to say, and here's another fun part, because it is. You come down the trail and you're actually got a real slow... Um, descend right here you gotta watch out for the roots and everything typically but here's what's so cool about this as you come around here you bear to the left and you ascend up the hill if you hit this part right here you can see where the trail is it starts to descend right here and if you slip off and you leave the trail you become a chuckling and mud angel I call this the abyss, and you don't want to go in there. When the trails are dry, there's actually a trail that comes down there and rings around and goes up there. But this usually floods really easy, so it's not often that it's open. But yeah, you don't want to miss this trail, because that's the consequence. Welcome to mountain biking. And here's a shot of the whole trail, as best as I can get it. There's the abyss, there's the trail, there's my bike right there next to that big old tree, and you're coming down there, hit the bottom, you start to climb, all those root clusters, you make a right, you go over here, and then we're going to drop on the other side of that wet puddle and head up that way. All right, bud, and that's it. Screaming Hawk Trail, 3.6 miles. And I uh, showed you what to expect. And I hope you're looking forward to joining me real soon. Adios, I'm a ghost.